Be the Talk, episode 218, featuring Stephen Coutinho. Welcome to Be the Talk. We go behind the talk seven days a week for tips and techniques to help you change the world. I'm Nathan Eckel, and a talker myself, I'm interviewing others who change the world with their talk. You can too, even if you've never given a talk before. Let's get started with today's show. We are live with Stephen Coutinho. Stephen, are you ready to talk? I am absolutely ready, Nathan. Stephen Coutinho is a banker, university lecturer, and author who lives in Curacao. His career has taken him from consultancy to economic policy advisor to managing director of Canada's largest bank in the Caribbean. Stephen is currently chairman of Aqua Electra and member of the Socioeconomic Council of Curacao. He holds a master's in physics, cum laude, from the University of Groningen, and an MBA in finance from the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania, which is right down the street from me, uh, a piece. So, uh, Stephen, welcome to Be The Talk. Thanks for having me, Nathan. Pleasure to be here. So your talk is called Stories, Choices, and Change. And I know that it is really focused on helping disadvantaged people, but I know it can also really help all of us, including me, because it, it reminded me of the stories that sometimes I tell myself, despite you know privilege and, and everything else, I think all of us have stories that need to be retold. And I love how you talk about your control probability theory. Can you just kind of take us behind the talk and uh, and, and start with the, the control probability theory? I thought that was really, really salient for everyone to be able to understand it, Stephen. Sure. Thanks, Nathan. So, um, yeah, my, my background has, has taken me across the world, and I, I found it so interesting to see certain behavioral patterns across post-colonial countries. And you know, for many years, people have said, well, it's maybe because of ethnicity and culture and this and that. And I said, no, there's only one thing which actually um, seems to tie everyone together, which is colonialism. And the thing that colonialism did was take away people's control. And they did it, first of all, with force. But then they told them a story about themselves, which said, you do not have control because of a, you have a certain level of skin pigment. And we'll call that race. Um, race itself doesn't actually exist. There is no biological basis for what we call race. It is a categor categorization. And the reason why we categorize people, Nathan, is because um, we need to be able to pre predict the world around us. And why we need to predict that world is because we need to control that world. Control basically is the difference between life or death. And if you do not believe you have control, you will start to show certain behaviors. Um, one of those behaviors is aggression. Um, I, I, if I believe I don't have control, I will try and get control back and I will fight and I will be aggressive. And once I've learned, unfortunately, that I cannot get control, I will become very, very uh, complacent. Mm. I will become, you know, what people call for, for better or worse, lazy because I don't believe I have control of the world. And um, the choices that apparently we seem to make when we believe we don't have control um, are very risk averse. We, we, we don't really take a lot of risks and we start to avoid working with others. I, I like what you said in the beginning, Nathan, about, you know, this isn't, ha this isn't really anything to do about a race. This is humankind. We have been so conditioned to think about stories about being too fat, too skinny, too this and too that. And it changes the way we look at ourselves, um, and it changes our the way we behave. Um, and we really need to realize these are stories, and they're not true. Well, and the stories go both ways. So as you're talking, Stephen, about people who are you know disenfranchised and really ultimately feel powerless because of the stories that they're telling themselves, because of you know two strikes, three strikes, four strikes, you're out. And living under that, there's another story from the other side of, of the tracks, which says, oh, those are lazy people. Those yeah. are people that are not capable of thinking. Why do they do that to them? I mean, there are all kinds of, of things that are said by people literally on the other side of the tracks that also 
need to be broken. I don't know if I'm taking this in a little little too out of the box, but I'd love for you to uh, to talk to that side of the tracks. I know this is kind of a outdated, perhaps a little bit politically incorrect analogy or phrase, but I think it applies right here. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on those other stories. You are you are so right. You know, um, I grew up in Australia, and I was discriminated against. Um, I, I'm I'm pretty white. I got green eyes, but in Australian terms, I am black. When I moved to South America, I was considered to be white, and my mind literally changed. Nathan, it's it's amazing um, to see how my mind. I looked at black people, and I started to discriminate them. And you know, so this happened to you. So you, you've, yes, you know, you're not I, pointing your finger at anybody because you've no, been on both sides. No, wow. I point, I, I point the finger at the brain. The brain mm. needs stories. The brain needs to be able to predict. And you know, look at the U.S. Look at our Starbucks issues. Look at our Roseanne issues. Um, you know, R- Roseanne has been uh, crucified, and I don't believe that is correct. And here's the reason why. And I, I'm saying something maybe politically not popular, but Roseanne is looking at the world through a certain conditioning. Mm -hmm. She's opening up her mouth based on a certain conditioning. Police officers are shooting people on sight based on a certain conditioning of their mind, of who they should be anxious for, of who they should be wary of. For many years, if you've been told that black people, for example, are bad, you will start to walk on the other side of the street. Because that is the way that your mind is starting to say, I need control. And the story now tells me that that black person in the hoodie is dangerous. So let me walk on the other side of the street or potentially shoot the person. Um, These are stories. And again, Roseanne, Starbucks, and all these, you know, the the, the whole issues in the U.S. right now with with the racial divisions, um, they are coming from people's preconditioned minds and things that they're saying and the way they are behaving are just coming from those stories. Um, so it does go both ways. And again, I've, I've been on both sides of the fence and I was able to see my brain literally flip-flop from being discriminated against to actually discriminating others. Now, powerful stuff, Talk Universe, for sure. Well, we're going to uh, enjoy the rest of this interview with Stephen Coutinho, and we're going to pivot over to you, Talk Universe, because it's time when we come back for the Blitz Round. People ask, how could I start a a seven-day-a-week podcast? It's because of what I've learned from my mentors. Some of the best mentors in history aren't around anymore. They've left hours of one-on-one mentoring behind in their books. Each month at Classics on Tap, I record a new chapter from a classic business book to help you make a difference. Download your first chapter at ClassicsOnTap.com. And we're back with Stephen Coutinho. It is time for the Blitz Round, Stephen. Are you ready? I am ready. I'm going to ask Stephen a series of either-or questions related to the preparation and performance of his recent, I believe it was TEDx Curacao, talk. That's right. All right. So the first is, um, did you apply or were you selected? Um, I was actually selected. Well, we're talking about how the other half lives here, people. That's good to be (laughs) selected. That's all I have to say about it. Are you, Stephen, an improviser, memorizer, or a blender? Um, I am a blender. Yeah? How do you blend? And how does it work for you? I literally came up with a framework of what I was going to say um, Mm -hmm. just in uh, a couple of short blocks. And then on stage, um, I, I literally glued the pieces together. Um, and I've always said, if you know what you want to say, don't memorize what you're going to mm. say, because it, it, it needs to come from the heart. And I, I think those are the most effective talks. So uh, you walk out on stage, Stephen. Did you have nerves or were you in the zone or neither or both? I meditated for about two hours before I went on stage. So I was the only person who was sitting in a room full of other uh, speakers, and I was sitting on a chair. And I was doing absolutely nothing but looking at the insides of my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounded like that worked and paid off for you for sure. Steve, Stephen, <laughs> yeah. what's, a, what's a tip, a tool, or a technique that helped you prepare? Um. 
I think the, the best preparation was to do as little preparation as possible. Mm. Uh, and again, it, it comes down to um, speak from the heart. Um, if you know your own story, if you know what you want to say, um, the more you start to prepare, the more nervous you will start to get. Because all of a sudden you say, oh, I missed out on that sentence. Oh, I missed out on that sentence. Oh, no. What was it going to say next? Um, it, it's, I literally, I had a coach. Um, he's a good Buddhist friend of mine, and he understands exactly what I say when I talk about reality. We had about three interactions, and he said, don't come to me anymore. And that was literally it. It was three talks, about you know, 15 minutes. Uh, we literally only focused on timing issues, and that was it. Powerful. Uh, what was, uh, this is the, the cut for time question. What was the most painful part of your talk that you had to leave out? Um, nothing actually. I, I was able to put everything in there. Um, I, I would have honestly liked to have spoken more about my personal uh, experience because, mm -hmm. you know, TED Talks really are effective when they're as personal as they can be. And I think that would be the only thing. Gotcha. Uh, what was the, this is the Murphy's Law question, what was the most strange or whacked out thing that happened right before or during your talk, even though you meditated? Um, what was strange? Oh, well, I actually thought um, I was going to be the second on stage. Oh. And I literally was starting to get up out of my chair, and I saw somebody else. I saw David Allen actually get up and walk on stage. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> so it was... You're literally preparing for that moment to stand up and walk there. And then you got, you know, David's a great human being. I loved watching him on stage. So I could, you know, um, but it was, it was fine. Now, wait a I minute. David Allen, David Allen getting things done. David yeah. Allen. That's exactly, uh, that's where I was, I uh, had the honor to meet David. Um, How many million copies of that book has he sold? I mean, that is a major product. That is the productivity textbook. Millions. I, it was interesting. I, was, I had a talk with David last week, and um, I asked him behind his uh, in his room. He had stacks of his book translated into you know so many different languages, um, you know, and rightly so. Uh, you know, he's got a good message uh, to get out there. All right, now talk universe. I'm being a little bit uh, funny because we've already recorded a little bit of extra content with Stephen, and David Allen actually had great things to say about Stephen's new book. So I'm I'm just kind of, you know, if if you haven't listened to that bonus session, you don't want to go ahead without listening to that. David said some amazing things. I went into that bio at that point. So anyway, back to to this. So so you were going to be second. And yeah. you're meditating, and well, it just gave you more meditation time. But uh, how did how did you kind of reframe uh, yourself, or or is that part of the reason why you meditated so long? Because <laughs> you, you had know, additional well, time. I actually stopped <laughs> meditating before everyone um, went to the front. Okay, you literally sit in the front row, and then I just enjoyed. You know, mm. David's a great person to listen to, and. You know, you, you really need to come. You need you need to convince yourself that look, you've done all the preparation you could potentially uh, have done. Um, don't worry about anything because there's nothing you can do between now and you know the next 18 minutes for the world to change. Accept the reality the way it is. Accept your preparation. You've done the best you can do. Don't worry. And again, this comes back to my initial talk. Fear is an evolutionary mechanism to keep us from harm. Nothing will harm you if you're on stage. People looking at you will not harm you. This is your basic emotional system just trying to avoid being rejected by a group. They will never reject you because they don't know what you're going to talk about. So anything you prepare is your preparation. They don't know what you're going to say anyway. We've been enjoying this conversation, actually, the Blitz Round with Stephen Coutinho. Now's the part where I get to tell you where to go to find out more about him. You can go to our show notes page uh, to learn about and wa actually watch the link to his talk, Stories, Choices, and Change. Uh, go to our show notes page at bethetalk.com if you don't want to type all that into YouTube. You can also go to his website, Breaking the Rank. Dot com breaking the rank.com we will also have a clickable link 
in the show notes page as well. And uh, we'll be back in just a moment with Stephen and the final word of advice for you talk universe. Everyone wants to change the world, but not everyone knows the first step. Before you can change the world with your talk, it has to be selected. So grab the templates, timelines, and tools that I use to get my talk selected at bethetalk.com. And we're back with Stephen Coutinho. It is time for the 30-second final word of advice. So my advice to everyone is um, you are there for a reason. This is where you need to be. Um, Anything else is just imagination. Stand on stage and understand that people are looking to you for new ideas. They're looking to you for inspiration. They're looking to you to understand. You are there for them. And that is all you need to understand. You know, anxiety, it's a story. Your story at this moment in time is the most important thing to get out there. So just enjoy the moment. Stephen Coutinho, thank you so much for coming on the talk today and sharing your wisdom with Talk Universe. Thanks for having me, Nathan. I really appreciate the time. Thanks for listening to Be The Talk. For tips and resources to help you change the world, go to bethetalk.com. See you tomorrow.